Okay, so the top three things to teach your poodle, poodle cross, cockapoo, labradoodle, poo poo, I do not know, but basically Aww, every poodle man. cross is going to be covered in these three things to teach them. Now, when we're talking about three things to teach your poodle, actually, we would start with showing just a youngster, really. She is a youngster. Yep. She's only, um, what is she now? She's just a year uh, old. A year old, yeah. Yeah, so she's a year old. And actually, I think it's appropriate for you to see a dog who has played lots of games, yeah. but equally, a dog who is still just a baby, yeah. really. And so she's a one-year-old standard poodle, and we thought we'd talk about kind of what are the top three things that we kind of focus on and teach in the first year. I love standard poodles. I think they are the coolest breed um, and the first thing I guess is actually what she's showing which is to be on a boundary calmly until release. Now, how do we grow this? How do we start to grow it? Well, to be honest, it all starts with her daily food allowance. It's just her daily food that she has that doesn't go in a bowl. Instead, it might go on little sessions like this where we're putting value on the boundary and occasionally what we might do is we might, for example, hi, call her off with a little release word, which hers is a weird noise. Um, and then what we're gonna do is we're gonna feed, feed for being back on that bed. And really, we grow this into looking for sort of approximations of calmness. So and she had a little lie down there, so we're gonna reward that. As she looks to kind of um, check out in the sense of start looking around rather than focusing on the food, we might grab that opportunity to, um, to, to reward those spontaneous moments of calmness again, which she missed. And that was a serious ninja That feed. was really ninja <laughs> because she didn't spot it. And don't worry if they don't spot it. Ultimately, what you're trying to do is deliver food in a non-event exciting yeah. way. You're trying to actually make it fairly calm. You're kind catching those moments where they don't even you don't even want them to um you don't even want them to see it or know that it comes from you it's just like this is a valued area this is a place that she wants to spend time now i have to note she's got a rather cool haircut going on like she really does i said to tom when she walked in there she has got it going on now i think our second tip and and our most important tip i think with poodles doodles and all of their crosses how do we handle from a games point of view yeah. actually how do we make grooming and handling and just being um able to be sort of touched i suppose yeah. part of the games based training for your poodle yeah well i think the there are two kind of factors to this, two things that we consider. First of all, from a very young age, we get them used to being on a table. So literally what will happen is she'll um, be picked up, put on the table when she's not big enough to jump on there herself, and it will just be feed, 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 much like a boundary game, really. Like, I'd love to see this on a, a table that later becomes the grooming table. What we're also looking to do while they're on the table is are they happy having their feet touched? If they're a poodle that are likely to, that, that's likely to have their feet shaved at some point, getting your finger between that ticklish area. Because it is a tickly toes. bit. It's a tickly bit. And actually this is something that you can gently condition yeah. without making it a big deal, a real yeah. deal, and, and something that you're gonna go and add clippers straight in. But you're just yeah. gently handling and you're getting permission to actively hold your dog's pad Good. or hold your dog's leg or hold oh, your dog's you. paw. You're you asking for permission, they're giving you that permission. Yeah, so what we can start to do, and you want to kind of start to see this, is that they understand it's about you touching their foot um, because you're you're touching their foot, you're, you're feeding them, you're putting your thumb between their toes, do they like that? And if you stop, what do they do? They want actively want that interaction to continue. Um, and you could just do you know, an occasional check-in. So you could say, okay, okay, you still want me to touch your foot, brilliant, right? So what we create is almost a conversation around being handled and being groomed where we give them um, opportunities to break off like that um, and check if they then want to get back involved in the game. So so let's say this was my grooming table. Well, I'm gonna to touch her feet, and then what I might do is say break, and see, does she want to get back on to this interaction? And of course this is happening on a bed rather than a, you know, a table, but it's exactly the same premise. If it was a grooming table and she was too little to jump off and on herself, I would just lift her off, pop her on the floor and see if she's like trying to clamber up to get back on that table. If she is, then we'll carry on that interaction break. 
she's like, do I want to? Do I want to sniff your fur? No, I want to have a groom again. I want this to continue. And um, so that would be the second tip is actually having a conversation with your dog around grooming. And it's making that a really good deal for your yeah. dog and actually making a conversation that your dog can't help but be part of. A little bit like asking um, Tom or I if we want to go and have a coffee or yeah. um, <laughs> it's, it's just a conversation that you're going to have. So you're yeah. going to say, yeah. Now, um, one tip around grooming, and this is a real game changer, is if you take your poodle doodle poodle cross to a um, to a, a groomer then actively say to them I don't care about this haircut being finished what I care about is my dog having a really great experience I think groomers are used to working with owners where potentially the owner would be upset if the dog's not looking absolutely like perfect and finished hell of high water if they were yeah. to come back and the dog isn't finished they're really in in trouble whereas and, and you want that to um, be different yeah right? absolutely whereas when you say to your groomer actually I want them to have a, a great experience if if that means that only three legs are done or their head and half their body I would sooner that and bring them and back at another time to get the rest done. if today we do half great if today we do three quarters great if today we do the whole fantastic yeah. either way I'm happy with you because I want you as my groomer because you're going to say enough's enough and we'll try again tomorrow yeah. it's not the first time I've seen Tom uh, with I, I've probably seen I don't know 10 15 times mm -hmm. Tom arrive with a poodle with like one leg and not yeah. the other and I've been like Tom what's happening and he's like, no, it's enough for today. Yeah. And then you start to get it. Me not having dogs that need any grooming, really. Um, my dogs, um, I mean, they need basic grooming, but not um, not not this type of grooming. And, and so for me, um, it's funny when you first see that. And at the same time, you start to appreciate that is dog training. And that yeah. is being a good dog trainer. And that Absolutely. is what you are, poodle, doodle, owner. Right. Now, the final tip, guys, is actually relating to how to recall your poodle, doodle or cockapoo cross, whatever. Um, what that involves is the, the, this breed and these types, they know a good deal and they know a bad deal and they are whip smart, right? They, you only have to kind of trick them once and they will not be tricked again, right? You only have to do try that old trick of throw food on the floor and creep up to them and get them on lead. Capture them. They will not have the food on the floor next time. They will not be tricked twice. And so instead what we do is throughout the walk, and this is why this kind of is made the top three tips, is we are going to call them to us, break, and maybe just call them into middle and there's a video below um, below this one where you can um, you can see how to play the steps of middle um, so we bring them back to middle so you can teach this in the video below and then I'm just going to let her go again so that it means that coming close and even touching her collar sometimes and I would say that's another stage of it where Tom's grabbing the collar or touching the collar I absolutely have to do that with Easy because she quite quickly my dog she'll quite quickly and um, become in the middle Hi. but then twitchy Hi. so actually in the middle hold the collar feed the dog in the middle hold the collar throw the food in the middle hold the collar let go hold yeah. the collar what you want to do is you want to be interchanging all of those yeah. as frequently yeah. as possible mixing it up That's matching it in different ways food. i think it's, it's a really true. really good idea she finds this food very strange and <laughs> it's taken her by surprise it's a strange kind of food <laughs> Hi, and back on her bed. So what we're working on there is actually just saying, you come in, you go out, you come in, you go out, you come in, and I touch your collar, you go out. it's a good deal. Ultimately, every time it's a really <laughs> good, good deal. Girl, eh? And when she does end up going on lead, she doesn't really even know about it because yeah. it's such a good deal. Yeah. So with that, guys, that was our top three tips to train your poodle, doodle, cockapoo, and how to overcome or even prevent some of those really common struggles that you might find with your dog. Most but, importantly, we want people to share it. Yeah, share it, share it with all your poodle, doodle cockapoo friends and um, because this information needs to get out there that you know there's a special approach to training these guys and getting the real life results make sure to check out the other videos on our youtube channel magma's in a lot of them so if you're wanting to see some real life poodle training then check out the youtube channel hit subscribe and we'll see you real soon Remember, Game Changers, whatever the dog owning struggle, there's a game for that. If you haven't already, remember to subscribe to our channel. And check out our new 25-day online dog training challenge. Watch the videos, play the games, transform your dog owning struggles. As a loyal YouTube subscriber, you can get a 70% discount through the link in the description below. And if you haven't already, subscribe to the number one most transformational dog training podcast on iTunes and Spotify, the Sexier Than a Squirrel podcast. And remember, to follow us on Facebook and Instagram for more live teaching, video content and free training using the links in the description.